This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Our Father, as we open thy word to continue our study, I pray that you'll give us wisdom, direct us, and help us to see and hear from the word of God the message that thou dost have for us today. Now, Lord, I know and I recognize that I cannot convict men of sin. I cannot save them. But our Father, I thank you for the privilege of being true to thy word that does convict and draw and is the power of God and salvation. Now, lead us and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. On the last broadcast in the series, I read Genesis 4, 26. Now, for the benefit of some who may be listening today for the very first time, we've added some new stations, and you may be listening to the Gospel Hour for the very first time. Now, I preach in series month by month. Sometimes we finish a series in one month. Sometimes we go two months. And a Revelation series, recently we ran five months every day. Now, this series we'll finish uh, this month and may go into the next month. I'm not sure. Now, I'm discussing with you from the Bible man and his relationship to God. Now, we've discussed the origin of God. He had no beginning. The origin of the devil. He's a self-made creature. And then the earth and why judgment struck the earth, the creation of Adam, and what happened to him. Now, today, I read only one verse that I read on the last broadcast, Genesis 4, 26. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, men began to pray. Now, you notice, you notice Cain's descendants. In verse 16, 17 through 24 of Genesis 4, Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. And that's the last time he spoke to God, so far as I know. He said, God, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And I suppose that's the last thing Cain ever said to God. Now he went away from the Lord. His son built a city. The descendants of the son went in the cattle business, then in the music business, then in the brass and iron business, then wholesale murder, and they bragged about it. Now, that is a commentary on the civilization that Cain produced. Now, God raised up another seed, Seth. Now, I want to show you something unusual. You don't see this just scanning or reading the Word of God. You must notice and study if you see it. Here it is. Genesis 5, 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him, male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. Now notice, And the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were eight hundred years. And he begat sons and daughters, and all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. Now underline those three words. Now let me show you something. You know, the a lot of people say, and, of course, the devil said to Sister Eve, Eat the fruit. You're not going to die. Thou shalt not surely die. Thou shalt not surely die. Now, that's what the devil said to Eve. Uh, Eve said, God said, Thou shalt not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, I, we went through that. I told you that Eve misquoted God. Now, the devil said, You're not going to die. Eve, thou shalt not surely die. Now, some say today, Well, preacher... They didn't die. I beg your pardon. They did. They died spiritually the very second they ate the fruit. And they died physically that same day. Now, what do I mean by that? In Second Peter 3 and verse 8, Beloved, be not ignorant. You know, God hates ignorance. 
And I'm not talking about getting a college degree or a university degree. That's wonderful to have. But a lot of people who have a degree from some universities are still ignorant because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, Proverbs 1, 7. Now, in 2 Peter 3, 8, But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Now, God, as I said, hates ignorance. In the Bible is the book of perfect knowledge, and the Holy Ghost wrote the Bible. He dictated the holy men, and they wrote what the Holy Ghost dictated. Yes, I believe in the verbal inspiration of the Scriptures, in spite of the fact that one of the outstanding religionists of this day declares that he knows great men of God who do not believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible. Now, I can't see that. I can't understand how anybody could say that a man could be a man of God if he didn't believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible. Now, what we mean by that is this. It's God-breathed, dictated by God through the Holy Ghost to holy men. And Peter tells us about that, of course, in the first chapter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 and 20 and 21. Now, we know that the Scripture is God-breathed and dictated by the Holy Ghost. Now, know this one thing. And let me say this before I read. Every born-again, blood-washed child of God, if you're born again, you have in your bosom the teacher of the Bible, the Holy Ghost. If you're born again, there's no such thing as the new birth apart from the Spirit, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you do not possess the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit may not possess you, but if you're born again, you have the teacher of the, the Bible in your heart. All right. Now in Second Peter 3, 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. God said, Adam, the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Now so far as God's calendar is concerned, a thousand years is a day, and a day as a thousand years. What do you say, preacher? If that be true, then the seven days mentioned, the six days wherein God created everything, including man, five days, he brought order out of chaos and created the animals and the fowls and the fishes and so forth, and then on the sixth day made man, then on the seventh day rested. If you say that, you say, if that be true, then it took God 7,000 years. No, I beg your pardon. He explains that the evening, or the morning and the evening were the first day, and the morning and the evening were the second day. See? Now, those days were 24-hour days. It's very plain. The morning and the evening. And that's, that's what we have in a 24-hour day, morning and evening. The morning begins now at midnight. That's morning. When the clock strikes 12 p.m., then a new day begins. And then when it strikes uh, of course, uh, at 12 o'clock high noon, the afternoon began. So the evening and the morning uh, make up a day, or the morning and the evening. Now, this day, this day of a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Now, that's God's business, and I don't have anything to do with it. It's just in the Bible. A day is as a thousand years with the Lord, and a thousand years one day. Now, Adam lived to be 930 and God clipped him, if you'll just excuse that expression. God cut him down. He died. God said, Adam, the day you eat thereof, you die. Now, Methuselah almost made it, but he didn't. He died too. And I want to show you now. All right? In these verses I've just read, now follow me closely. Bible says God created a male and female. Verse 3, Adam lived 130 years and beget a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Now, Seth was born, the man that had a son, and he began to pray. That's when people began to call on God. Not one time did Cain call on God. Not one time did any of his descendants call on God. God isn't mentioned in the commentary on Cain's civilization. Not one time did they build an altar. Not one time did they seek God's face. They ran their lives, their business, and they ran it right into a flood, and God drowned the whole mess. All right. Now, Adam lived 130 years, and we get Seth. Now, Seth was, was begotten, and Seth was born in the 130th year of the life of Adam. So now you can see approximately how old Abel, Cain and Abel, or Cain was. Abel, of course, was murdered uh, shortly before Cain was banished, 
and into the land of Nod, and that word Nod means vagabond. In other words, Cain named the land to which he was banished uh, Nod. Now, somebody said, where did Cain get his wife? Cain carried his wife with him into the land of Nod. And I don't know how many daughters were born to Adam and Eve. I have no idea. I, I don't know. And I don't know whether any more sons were born or not. I can't answer that. But I know this. When he was 130 years old, Seth was born. And Seth had a son. And his name was Enos. And they began to pray. They began to call on the Lord. All right. Now, in giving the... Uh, the sons of Adam, notice what happens. Here it is. Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Now verse 4, and the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Now, it does not say one word about Abel or Cain. See? Now, when Cain killed Abel, Cain killed a whole generation. In other words, Cain murdered Abel and all the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Cain murdered thousands. He murdered thousands when he killed Abel. Now, God doesn't even mention Abel. Because Seth is another seed, and the word Seth means appointed. He was appointed of God to take Abel's place. Now notice this. He doesn't mention Cain. Why? Because Cain was banished and cursed, and finally his descendants were wiped from the face of the earth in the flood. Cain is not mentioned. Abel is not mentioned. And the generations of Adam begin with Seth. The appointed. Seth was appointed of God, and he is the beginning of the God-fearing people who seek the Lord. All right, now read on down in verse 6. And Seth lived a hundred and five years and begat Enos. Now when Enos was begotten, Seth was a hundred and five years old. Then it goes on down, and uh, next verse, and Seth lived after he begat Enos eight hundred and seven years, and begat sons and daughters. Now, listen to what happened. And all the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. Now, notice that, beloved. I want you to underline those three words. Underline them in this chapter, and I hope I'll get through today with this. I really want to. Now, read on down. Enos lived ninety years, and begat his son, and then he lived, and he begat sons, 800 and so on years. And verse 11, all the years of Enos were 905 years. Notice that dropping, and he died. Three words, and he died. Now then, his sons lived, and to save time, I I'm not going to read all these verses, and they begat sons and daughters. And in verse 14, all the days of Kenna were 910 years, and he died. Three words, he died. Remember, Adam the day you eat, you die. The wages of sin is death. All right. Now read on down. He lived and begat sons and daughters and so forth and so on. Verse 17. And he died. Notice it. Trying to save time. I want you to read all these uh, verses, but I'm saving time by just showing you the three words. And he died. And Jared lived 106 years and so forth. And he begat Enoch and so forth. And they begat sons and daughters. In verse 20. In verse 20. And he died. He died. He lived 960 and two years, and he died. Now then, uh, Enoch lived 60 and five years, and he begat Methuselah. Now notice this. He begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God. Now I want to stop right there and drive up a stake and stay there just a few minutes. Enoch walked with God in one of the darkest hours of man's history, just before the flood. Enoch walked with God. Now, I don't mean just a few days before the flood. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about during the time of the wickedness, the wholesale murder, and during the time of sin, Enoch walked with God. Now, let me say this, beloved. When you and I fail to walk with God, it's nobody's fault but our own. Any man that desires to walk with God, I don't care how dark the day may be, how wicked the age may be, it makes no difference if you want to walk with God. You'll find his company, and he'll be glad to have you, and he'll walk with you. Now listen, he begat Methuselah. 
300 years and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. 365 years. Now listen to verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. God took him. And Methuselah lived an hundred eighty and seven years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he began Lamech seven hundred and eighty and two years. Notice this now. Methuselah lived a hundred eighty and seven years and begat Lamech. And then he lived after that. Eighty, uh, uh, seven hundred eighty and two years, and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred sixty and nine years, and he died. Nine hundred sixty-nine years. He lacked thirty-one day uh, years, thirty-one years living God's day. A day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years day. No man, no man ever lived a day according to God Almighty's day. So Methuselah died. And Lamech lived a hundred and eight. Uh, eighty and two years, and he begat a son, and so forth, and called his name Noah, and right on down the line. Now then, let me show you this now. I want you to see it. Adam begat sons and daughters, and he died. That's verse 5. All right, that's 1. In verse 8, he died. That's 2. In verse uh, 11, and he died. That's 3. All right? In verse 14, and he died. That's 4. In verse... Uh, in verse 17, and he died. That's 5. In verse uh, 20, and he died. That's 6. 6. Then Enoch walked with God, and God took him. Enoch walked with God, and God took him. Now then, beloved, listen to me. A day is as a thousand years with the Lord, and a thousand years as one day. Six men lived and begat sons and daughters, and they died. And the seventh one, Enoch, was translated. Now listen, I'm not a date setter, but I want to show you something today that might be interesting to you. If a day is as a thousand years, the Lord, and a thousand years one day, God labored six days and rested on the seventh. Now then, four, four thousand years before Christ, two thousand years since Christ, four and two is six, that's six thousand years, men have been dying and remember, Enoch the seventh was translated. Now, so far as I'm concerned, I believe that it's about time for the church, and Enoch is a type of the rapture. Enoch is a type of the rapture. Those of us who will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air without dying. Enoch walked with God in a dark day just before the flood, when wickedness was rampant, and God repented that he'd made a man. Enoch walked with God, and God took him, and took him on home to heaven without dying. Now, one of these sweet days, one of these glorious days, one of these marvelous days, some of us will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. There will be believers living that will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. Remember, Adam, the day you eat, you die. He did. His descendants died. They died down to the seventh and then down to the uh, down to the seventh, six, he died, he died, he died, he died, he died, he died. Six times, and then Enoch, Enoch walked with God, and God took him, he didn't die. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Now that's 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 2, 3, and on down the line. Now one of these days we're going to be caught up. Enoch is a type of the raptured saints, the rapture of the church, walking with God, caught up without dying. Now listen, dear friend, if you're born again, if you're washed in the blood, if you're saved by grace, even though you are a descendant of Adam, even though through Adam's disobedience, sin moved upon all men, if you're saved, thank God, you may be one of those that will be caught up, snatched out, taken home, to be with the Lord God Almighty in the air. Won't that be glorious? Hallelujah. What a hope. What a glorious hope of the soon coming of King Jesus. If you're not ready to meet him, bow your head and get ready right now. Father, save the soul that's nearest hell, because we do believe that the coming of Jesus is at the door. Help us, Father, to be ready for in such an hour 
as we think not he comes. Save the soul that's nearest hell in Jesus' precious name. Amen.